Okay, welcome to Jatai Scissor Fundamentals. Today we're going to work on a little graduation. And when you're dealing with graduation, especially if you're getting really tight in the nape, it presents its own set of issues that you have to deal with. So today I'm going to be using the J355 from Jatai, and I'm dealing with a five and a half inch scissor. When I work with a, a smaller scissor, it forces me to deal with smaller sections of hair. Because the blade's not as broad, I can't be as crude with my cut. I have to be much more precise and much more diligent about my application because I don't have as much blade length. And this also provides me with a nice, easy way to deal with the problem side of graduation. And, and I'll explain that as I get to it. So let's get started, shall we? So the first section that I wanna take is I'm taking a center or natural part to the occipital to the mastoid. So that's gonna section out all the hair in the nape. So I wanna start out in the center, taking a little pie section. Try to get that in there as clean as I can. And we're gonna turn this so you can see. Now from here, I wanna comb that section straight out from the head at 90 degrees from the head. I'm gonna plant my knuckles at the base of the hairline and then bring my fingers at whatever angle that I think the graduation needs to be. So I'm gonna visualize what angle of graduation that I want. I'm planting my knuckles at the uh, hairline and then we'll go through and cut that down and through. And then I'm gonna check and see where my graduation length is. I'm not worried about my perimeter shape right now. I'm only focusing on the angle of graduation. Straight out from the head, go through, work that through. I'll pivot to the corner of the hairline. And then I'm gonna comb this section and the first section together. I want to make sure that this piece of hair here always stays at the exact same elevation and the exact same head position for every section. This is my guide for the rest of the entire nape. So comb those two together, make sure that that center piece is being held 90 degrees from the head. There's my line and then go through and cut that angle through. Check out the graduation. Don't worry about the perimeter. Pivot half of the next section. Pin that out of the way. Comb into the previously cut guide. Make sure that the center is being held exactly the same way. Cut that down and through. There's my angle. Cut that down and through. Check my graduation. Don't worry about the perimeter. Last section, make sure that the center is being held the same way it's always been for the entirety of the nape. There's my line. Follow that through. And you can start to see my graduation developing right there and the angle that it is. Now comes the hard part, <laughs> matching the other side. So I'm gonna take my center section again, comb all this hair out of the way, try to pin it over so it doesn't bother me, pivot from the center to the corner of the hairline, Comb these two sections together. Make sure that this is being held at the exact same elevation. Comb those two together. There's my line. Cut that through. Now, the reason I was saying that this is the hard side is because on the left, it's easy to point my fingers and keep my knuckles tucked in close to the scalp and then cut from the top going down. On the right side, I'm cutting from the bottom going up. So that's why I need a shorter scissor so that I can get in there as much as I can without the head really 
throwing my scissors off if I had a long blade, I couldn't even get in there close. So the smaller the scissor, the tighter that I can fit that in. Next section over. Let's get this pinned up out of the way. Combed into the previous section. There's my line. Cut that down and through. Check out my graduation. Take my last piece. There's my line. Cut that out and through. Don't worry about the perimeter. We'll deal with that later. I'm just making sure that this line right here is the same on both sides. Now, after I've got my section here, the same on both sides, I can either choose to ignore the nape or cut it now. If I'm OCD and it's gonna bother me, then I'll just comb this down, cut this straight across, just to give me a semblance of a line, just to give me a little bit of a line to make it look cleaner. Okay, next section, we're gonna go one flat part of the head, the next flat part of the head to the top of the ear. This angle that we took here from the second flat part of the head where it's rolling over should be the same angle as what we were cutting underneath. This section here in graduation is the most important section of the entire haircut. I'm gonna go through, section out the same sort of pie section that I took underneath. But underneath, from the occipital down, because the head curves in, I took that at 90 degrees from the head. If I take this section 90 degrees from the head, and pull it here, I'm not gonna have graduation. I'm gonna to start to round my shape out and layer it. So what I wanna make sure is remember how this section was being held straight up from the head at 90? That's because the head's curving in. This section here is gonna be held at that elevation. And that's gonna be held at the exact same angle of elevation for both sides. So from here, find that angle of elevation with the top of the section, comb that into the previous section. You see my guide right there. Comb everything out, find your angle, and continue that line. So we're gonna hold that, make sure my elevation is proper. There's my angle of my cut line. Support, cut that through. Comb this down, and now you will really start to see my graduation take shape. Pivot. Pin this hair out of the way. Make sure that my angle of elevation is proper in the, in the center. Comb that out. There's my line. Now, short scissors really help me get in here nice and tight at the nape. Comb that down. Now you're really seeing that develop. Pivot to the mastoid. Elevation the same. There's my angle. Cut that through. There's my line, I need to adjust there. There we go. There is my line. Cut that through. Next and last section on the right side. Through. Now, 
Now let's go to the other side. Pivot to the corner of the hairline. I want to try to take exactly the same sections on both sides. I don't want them to be different. I want them to be as close to the same as possible. It makes it easier for me to match the sides. Again, this section is always going to be held at that elevation in the center of the head. I'm not going to cross over the head. Center of the head. There's my section. Follow the pattern and just hope that the pattern's right. Next section to the mastoid. Pin that out of the way to the center, right here. Continue to work that through. There is my line. Last section right through here. Now let's check and see, oh, that's not bad. That is not bad. So now you can really see our graduation shape up. We got a nice tight crop in the nape and it gradually stacks as it goes. And if you look at it from a profile, you'll see exactly how that line will continue to follow this graduation shape into a longer length in the front. So now we've got our, our next section and I'm going to change it up. Underneath I was taking vertical sections and then pivoting to develop this kind of graduation that would gradually get longer as I got to the front. I've done that for two sections in the back. Now I'm going to go through and take horizontal sections and hold that at the same elevation that I was holding the underneath section and cut that blunt so I end up with a solid line sitting on paw and so I end up with a solid line sitting on top of my graduation. I want to make sure that I'm elevating it at this elevation again. This is the top of the parietal ridge which is often referred to as a drop crown. So I'm going to comb this down. I'm going to find where the ridge is. Rock this up and down, find it. There's the line and cut that straight across. There's my next line. There's my guide from underneath. Cut that straight across. Following the angle of my guide line from underneath, Now you can really see the shape develop because I have a solid line sitting on top of a graduated line. Same thing on the other side. The last section, the same thing. So even though I'm working with a smaller scissor and that allows me to be much more detailed, it doesn't mean that I can't still cut a very large thick section of hair. It just gives me the added benefit of being able to really fine tune smaller pieces. Let's check and see. Okay, not bad. 
Not bad. Let's check our graduation and our line out and see how that stacks in and builds a nice solid line, but we got a nice hugging head shape underneath. So let's dry it, take a look at it and fine tune it. All right, so you can see we've gone through and dried everything and the overall shape is looking pretty good. She's got a lot of hair. It's too damn thick, but the shape overall is pretty clean. So now I want to fine tune it. And the way I'm going to fine tune, the first thing I want to deal with is this line down here on the bottom. I'm combing everything down in the nape here and just going through and fine tuning this hairline right through here and making sure everything kind of fits in tightly and cleanly like I want. Just real diligent, taking my time, being patient, and just making sure that that hairline fits in like I want. So to recap this, we have to understand that one scissor does not fit all. You need different sizes. So you need something larger to, to deal with large amounts of hair. You need something smaller to deal with tight fitting, you know, detailed types of work. And this really categorizes itself as a detailed kind of shape with it being so short in the nape and the way that we were cutting it. So check out the Jatai Academy. We got all kinds of education over there. Share your work. We have inspiration as well. So check it out and we will see you next time. Thanks.